The American League East is tightening up. Rob Bradford of WEEI in Boston, one of our favorites, joins us on Baseball Central. And 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 Rob, I thought I thought Boston packed it in, had packed it in. Weren't they getting rid of all their old guys and bringing up all their young guys? You have to go a long way in Boston. You have to be really, really out of it for them to admit they're going to pack it in. You Let's, know that. It, it's, it's almost it's, like close your eyes, you know, open your eyes, and you're in a in, in a pennant race. Well, you know, I, I think that they're going to go. They were going to get to the trade deadline no matter what, it, because as I said, you, they invest so much money in this. They the fan base. If you tell them they're going to sell, no, that won't go over well for a long, long time. So if there's a glimmer of hope. They're going to grab onto it, and it just so happens that, that glimmer of hope are, reappeared, thanks in part, by the way, to the White Sox and the Houston Astros. So, uh, you know, now they beat Kansas City, a pretty respectable team, and we'll see where it goes against Toronto. Rob, when you talk about, or people talk about the World Series hangover, now, when I say that, what I think of is the long season, what you have to do, and everything has to really go right all year long to win a World Series, but you're going deep into the season. The offseason's shorter for players. Are those factors here? To me right now, when I look at Boston Red Sox, that's a team that's just scuffling offensively. Yeah, it's a good question. And, and, you know, they head into their spring training with their eyes wide open. They they drew back on their starting pitching, knowing they had to increase workload in October. Uh, And, and, but they go into the year, and I think the biggest mistake they made were they didn't account enough for the depth to replace the guys they lost. In other words, they lost to Kobe Ellsbury. They replaced him with Jackie Bradley, who's hit around 210 most of the year. Stephen Drew, you didn't replace him really. And then when you brought him back, he had two and a half months off, so he, did, he wasn't in the flow of things at all. Daniel Nava was a hugely important guy. They set him back down after two and a half weeks in the season, and finally, they got him back going now. And then, you know, A.J. Brzezinski replacing Jared Salt-Lamakia, a bad idea from the get-go, never worked out. Now they have Christian Vasquez up, who's had some life, just some things. So I think they, they just undervalued, I think, what they had to do to replace the guys and key, key guys they lost. Rob Bradford of WEEI joins us on uh, Baseball Central. So the Red Sox come into Toronto for a four-game series. It's artificial turf. Uh, I, I know that there, I think Shane Victorino came back on the weekend. Is this, is this going to create an issue for John Farrell and, and create an issue in terms of how he's going to use players over these four games? So I think they've got seven games in turf. Actually, they go to Tampa. Yeah, it's a great point. And, and Victorino, they want to squeeze out as much as they can off of the second half, but they have to be very wary. Every time they bring him back, he has some sort of relapse with his hamstring or his back. So I do think they're going to be careful. And then the other guy, obviously, Jeff, is, is David Ortiz. He, I mean, David Ortiz is such a huge part of this lineup, even though he didn't do much against Kansas City. And, and we know that just even running the bases, sometimes that takes a toll on his calves and, and his feet on that turf. So it will be interesting to see how he manages it because there are key, key guys they have to keep in the lineup to keep things going. Because as you guys mentioned before, the offense by far has been the biggest issue with this team. He says he's uh, going to be hotter than Jamaica. <laughs> I'm about to yeah. get hotter than Jamaica in the middle of August, according to uh, according to your colleague Alex Spears. Is that? Uh, yeah, I know. I didn't know. If, and I asked Alex this: Did he mean that he was getting hotter than Jamaica in August, or <laughs> Jamaica in August? Because <laughs> I'm like, if if it's Jamaica in August, then why are you waiting to August to get hot as Jamaica? I wasn't quite clear on that. Alex, as always, uh, clarified that for me. But as one of the things we know about David Ortiz is, you know, he does tend to back up his words every now and then, doesn't he? <laughs> well, Jeff, I would say this, that, you know, through all the bluster of Ortiz, through all the controversy, you know, through all the ill-time comments, contract and scoring decisions and everything else, the Red Sox would be in a pitiful spot without him. Mm. He, 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 supplies a, he supplies such an enormous part of that lineup. And something that, to be honest with you, I don't know how they're going to replace when he's gone. They don't have very many power bats in the system at all. It's the hardest thing to find in baseball right now. And why he doesn't have a 950 OPS of a year ago, he, he, he still has about an 860 OPS. He, he's doing okay. And they desperately need him. So I, I, I think that people get caught up in the personality of David Ortiz and the controversy of David Ortiz. The one thing the Red Sox have to take stock of, 38-year-old or not, 
he is maybe the most important guy on this team right now. Right, and he was he was one for thirteen in that Kansas City series, yeah. by the way. And talking about offense, Rob, how about Brock Holt and his contribution in playing all over the field? I know Bogarts has not had the year that the Red Sox has anticipated. What do you make of that? What Brock Holt has provided? I mean, we talk about key guys and guys they can't do without. It's amazing. I think that Brock Holt, the guy who lost out on the utility job in spring training, has become one of the most valuable guys of this team. Valuable because he's moved all over the diamond. He's moved all over the outfield, the infield, and played well wherever he's gone. But I think also, maybe most important, is that he's been their leadoff hitter. I mean, you took Ellsbury out, and you were hoping that Nav and Victorino would slide in, which wasn't a perfect solution. And then all of a sudden, Holt appears. And since he's been put in the leadoff spot, he has more hits than any other leadoff hitter in the major league. This is, again, a guy, guys, this was the throw-in in the Joel Hanrahan trade who started the year in the minor league. So, yeah, I, he's, he is a very, very valuable guy and good for him. I mean, he, he was given a chance. He made the most of it. Rob, it was good of you to do this as always. Thanks so much.